Hello, hello everyone. My name is Jordan Meller and it is an absolute privilege to be in front of you today. Welcome to the week ahead by Trade Delicious. I hope you've all had a fantastic and relaxing weekend and you're ready to get back into the markets with some ambition and with some motivation. We've had a bit of a crazy weekend with OPEC announcing they're going to cut their oil production. We'll discuss a little bit more on the impact this will have on the markets and why they've made the decision a little bit later in today's episode. What you do need to know from the get-go is the US aren't happy and they have expressed their discontent with the decision. Later this week, we do have the RBA rate statement expected to come in at 25 basis points, but we'll dive into exactly why this might not exactly come to fruition. That's due on Tuesday. And then Friday, we have the US dollar non-farm employment figures expected 3.6. I've got an inkling it might come in a little bit higher than that. Having a look across the whole market is exactly what we're going to do in the new week ahead. If you are new to Trade Delicious, highly recommend you consider subscribing and turning that notification bell on. We are live every single trading day to dive through exactly what's happening that day, where the prices are, and the best tradable opportunities in which we can find as our analyst team has a look. As we do move throughout today's episode, I want to keep in mind, guys, that Mr. Don Dawson, the futures trader with over 35 years experience, is joining me in an episode of Traders of Money later this week. So do make sure you've turned that notification bell on to be notified when that comes live. He does also share a bit of a trade that he's going to be taking from April 4th to April 14th. That's right. And that's going to be in the Aussie dollar. So we'll dive into a little bit about that and about Mr. Don Dawson a bit later, but make sure you're subscribed, you've got that notification bell on and you're ready to learn. For now, let's go have a look at what's moving the markets and what we can expect macroeconomically this week. All right, well, let's start by having a look at the currency market and the major of majors, the fantastic euro US dollar was trading in a pretty sideways range between 1.1 and 1.055. We've had these drawings set out for a few weeks now. For everyone that joins us in our live trading rooms, you would have seen these plenty of times before. The red line priced in at 1.0915 was priced in earlier last week and you can see we rejected that once again in Wednesdays and Thursday um, last week and over to the weekend. We've gapped right the way down uh, this morning. Uh, sorry, not gapped. We've run right the way down based off that OPEC news. Uh, we are seeing a bit of traction come into the US dollar as the S&P 500 gaps down in the futures market. Looking into the euro itself, it's going to be really important week macroeconomically. There's not going to be anything that's really going to generate movement in the euro, no volatile events, no ECB meetings. However, we do have an abundance of data being released for the euro, euro currency, okay? We've got all of the manufacturing PMIs, the services PMIs. We go right the way down to German trade balance. We've got the Spanish unemployment coming through. We really have the, the PPI month on month. We, we've got a lot of data being released for the euro. Nothing that's really going to generate major movements, but there is a lot of data which can obviously give us a bigger view macroeconomically on how the European currency is performing. So it's going to be a great data analytical week for the euro. Uh, nothing too much in terms of volatility expected, okay? Expected is the key word. Obviously, things can change as the week unfolds, uh, but expected right now, we're not expecting uh, too much volatility or volume to come through there. So that means looking at the euro US dollar pair, I'm looking more into the US dollar, how it can do. I am expecting this 1.1 to get tapped at some point, maybe not this week, but into the next week. We are expecting a very slow growth towards around the 1.1, uh, but I am expecting it to get up here. Bit of an aggressive push from this red 1.091, which we had drew out. Uh, which has been a previous level that is rejected multiple times, okay? So we were expecting a bit of a rejection, which we have seen come to fruition. Um, pulling back down, maybe around the 
50 SMA, we can find a bit of support to, to head a bit higher, but let's see what happens. Because later today, we have the ISM manufacturing PMI expected to come in at 47.5. Our previous was 47.7, okay? 2nd of March was when we got that 47.7 data release. We were forecasted a 47.9. So we fell short of our expectations last time out. This time, we're expecting a market contraction. So with these numbers, anything above 50 is going to be market expansion. Anything below 50 is market contraction. Uh, we're sitting right now at 47.7. We're expected to come in at 47.5, which is market contraction when it comes down to the manufacturing PMI. That's coming out Monday, April 3rd. Okay, so that's going to be today. Uh, moving into the next day, Tuesday, April 4th, we've got Jolt's job openings coming through, followed by the ADP non-employment change. Okay, so a uh, bit of data coming through on Tuesday. Uh, the ADP non-farm non employment change is going to be later uh, on Wednesday. Sorry, I've got my calendar mixed up. That is going to be later on Wednesday. But the Jolt's job openings will generate a bit of moving. Uh, and we've also got the factory orders month on month coming out for the US dollar. Moving into Wednesday, you've got the ADP non fly employment change and the ISM services PMI. Once again, looking at market contraction on that ISM services PMI. So looking at for a 54.5 from a 55.1. So while we're still expecting because we're above 50. Uh, we are looking at contraction compared to our last release there. And then finally on Friday, uh, as you all probably are aware of, non-farm employment, it will be released uh, expecting 235,000 more jobs created uh, from the 311,000 which we had out last month. Based on the services um, PMI and the manufacturing PMI, we are seeing market contraction in both of those. We may see a little bit more unemployment than expected. Uh, so these numbers of growth may come in a little bit colder, maybe 211,000 uh, based on that. But we'll do some more research later in the week. Be sure to join us live if you want to see more on that. We are expecting 3.6%, the unemployment rate to stay at 3.6%. This may creep up to 3.7 to 3.8, depending on how some of this PMI data is announced. Look at in the euro as a whole, it's a US dollar type of week, okay? So the euro is going to be quite flat while we have a lot of data coming out. Um, I can expect this to come to the upside depending on that US dollar data, okay? Uh, if the US dollar is going to be strong for the US economy, obviously this is going to move back down closer to that 1.055. If it's going to be weak for the economy, we can head back up to that 1.1 area, which will be a solid area of rejection. So just be careful when trading around these prices. Moving on to US dollar Japanese yen, we've had a solid gap up this morning based on that OPEC news and the real economic impact of that on the speculation that's coming through. Once again, heavy on the US dollar front, okay? We are seeing the Japanese yen come back to that fearful currency when there is that element, much like gold, when there is that element of a recession or people are scared of a recession coming through. These safe haven assets tend to come to fruition. Right now, the Japanese yen seems to be returning to that level. We're trading in a very funny area. Gapping is not something that is foreign to the US dollar Japanese yen pair recently. Uh, we have gapped up. We had a very positive week, 1.7% move last week, which was uh, different to the previous weeks in which we were feeling and then a gap up testing this 50 SMA. It's going to be really important. The last time we did gap up into a test here, you can see we had a rather large rejection earlier in the week. Could we see something come to fruition like that potentially? Um, if we do see the Japanese yen gain that bit of strength, we may see a bit of a retest around these 138 areas, uh, 138, sorry, 131.8 uh, areas or 130.8 areas. Really just getting my numbers mixed up there. Uh, we could see a test further back down to these levels. It's really hard for me to pick a direction in which I like trading this. We are seeing a bit of a uh, drop in volume price as we did have this pull down, which is leading me to believe that we can move higher. We've seen a rather large amount of momentum come into the chart here as we reject. If any Fibonacci traders are around, it's going to be around that 6 
uh, area. As you can see, that's 6.18, almost down to that 7.86. Uh, that's really where we've rejected and we're starting to push back higher. So looking a longer term, maybe the 137.8s the uh, could be a target area. I don't think we'll get up there this week. You're going to be asking a lot to get up there this week, maybe a 1% gain throughout the week uh, to price us around the 135s. But let's keep an eye on how we unfold. And once again, a lot of economic data to really unfold uh, for the US dollar, which is what's going to move this chart more than anything else. Moving into the Aussie dollar, US dollar pair. Australian dollar's got a busy week, much like the US dollar this week. So we can expect a lot of volatility in the Australian dollar, US dollar. Now we have seen this come to fruition recently by these massive whipsaws that you can see within the daily scales. Um, this may continue. While we do have a very volatile week expected based on the data that we have, that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to get a directional movement. Okay, There may be a lot of whipsawing throughout this week like we have seen over the past couple of weeks. So keep that in mind. The first and probably major thing that we're going to see impact this is the ISM manufacturing PMI, which comes out on Monday. But on Tuesday, late Monday night for our American traders, early uh early Tuesday, about 2.30 p.m. Melbourne time Tuesday, we have the RBA cash rate statement. We're expected to come in at 25 basis points higher. Okay, so we're expecting a 25 basis point rate hike. Uh, the market is a little unsure on how they're priced out. Futures aren't completely sold on the idea that we're going to get that to fruition. Um, so while we're talking about the 25 basis point rate hike, let's see what the RBA makes. We don't have the overall pressure in which the US US does to release those interest rates hikes. Uh, our banking system is rather solid right now. And, uh, as a whole, the whole Asia Pacific region is looking economically solid when it comes down to banking. So all of these extra pressures, which the Fed and the ECB feel with needing to stop hiking interest rates, it doesn't really come to fruition over in the APAC currency. So we may still see them come in at 25 basis points. Uh, it's a terrible drawing by me, but I gave it my best shot. If they do come in with 25 basis points, you may see a bit of demand come into the Aussie dollar early session. Uh, but let's just see what it does come to fruition. If they don't hike or they reduce uh, their interest rates, then yeah, definitely look for some weakness across with the Aussie dollar. What's really interesting, and Mr. Don Dawson will talk you through this later in the week, is it is the beginning of our harvest season here in the Aussie dollar. And we sell a lot of natural resources when we do harvest wheat, uh, grain, all of this stuff we do sell in Australian dollars, which means because we are harvesting, it is coming to the point of sale. We sell this overseas, which means a lot of currencies, uh, sorry, a lot of countries are going to have to exchange currency into the Aussie dollar in order to buy all of our produce, okay, which obviously will create demand in the Australian dollar. So you may see that come to fruition over the next few weeks. If you want to hear more about that or dive into and get a little bit better of an understanding of what I'm on about there, stick around for the Don Dawson interview later this week and he'll explain exactly what he was talking about. Not only do we have, obviously, the RBA rate statement, the following day, we've got Mr. Governor Lau speaking as well, talking about the future rate hikes and where that may go. So it's important to keep an eye on that. And then we move into that usual US dollar news. So expecting a very volatile week. However, I don't think we'll get much of direction. If we do get a direction, I'm favoring the upside bias in the Aussie dollar. Similar attitude coming into Great British Pound, US dollar as well, the cable. Um, very, very similar. There's, there's not much economically for the pound. We are seeing a lot of demand come into it, uh, into fruition. So keep an eye on that as we do address this 124, 124.3, 124.4 area. Um, it's an interesting spot. We see we've rejected it multiple times. It's been an area we have bounced around back in April last year. Uh, really on the lows, you could argue there's a bit of a head and shoulders formation towards the upside. So will that give you a bit of incentive to take the pound back to the upside? Are investors willing to get risk on back in the pound? Let's see. But once again, much like the euro, I'm expecting the US dollar to be doing all the movements uh, this week. And if anything, right now, it's looking like it might come a little little bit more down uh, before we do head higher, at least to retest these solid numbers in which we failed to break.
Moving on into our indice pairs, the S&P 500 massively outperforming my expectations last week, coming in with a 3.35% climb based on an early downside uh, on Monday and Tuesday. It was interesting to see how aggressive and risk-on traders are willing to be. As I mentioned, based on this OPEC news, we have had a bit of a gap down in the futures of the S&P 500. The market's still yet to open and things may change depending on when you're watching this, so please keep that in mind. Throughout this week, we are moving up into some higher priced areas. The 4160s are going to be an area, as we can previously see, has been an area of rejection multiple times. As we do push up into here, especially if we're extended and we prolong this drop in volume in which we're witnessing. If we're going to get this massive extension into a strong area with this drop in volume, we definitely could see a rejection. So keep that in mind. Around these 4060 areas, we may see a bit of price let me go ahead and change that color so it's easier for you guys to see you may see a bit of rejection around this prices let's let it sink in let's have a look at all the data we have being released this week to get an idea on whether or not this risk on sentiment or this bullish momentum in which we found is actually worth getting into or whether it is just an over exaggeration or even the short sellers cashing out on their profits so keep an eye on this as we do push up into these 4160s uh, we're trading right now just under 41 flat. 41 flat will be a bit of a psychological number, which we could see rejection off as well. Um, but yeah, the, the 50 SMA is moving quite nicely to the upside, showing a, a decent uptrend. Uh, not sure how long it'll last for, but these are key areas to have a look out for. Much like the S&P 500, most indices are going to replicate. We're seeing this real aggressive momentum continue. Now, in the DAX, we've actually had this over the last few months. We've, you can see the pump we've had through January, the pump we had in November last year, and we're seeing a bit more of a pump come through to test these highs, uh, which is going to be really interesting to see the way the market reacts back up around these highs of early uh 2022 you can see last time we were around here was january 2022 uh november 2021 was the last time we priced up we are being quite aggressive and if this is anything to go by on what we've seen previously here and here uh, we can definitely expect this to maybe continue in the dax as we push a little bit higher it, it's not unlikely and uh it is quite the volatile asset that we can sustain these type of moves once again much like the s p 500 however these drops in volume are a little bit worrying as we do push up our buyers losing interest in testing this area. If we manage to break, I don't see why not uh, in, in heading much higher, at least up to maybe the maybe the even 16 flats. Uh, the 16,000 area could be an area of interest for the DAX as we push a little bit higher. So keep your eye on the DAX as it unfolds this week. Also important to note with that DAX as well, obviously we are going to have a lot of that European data. Uh, these are going to affect the individual co uh, companies within the DAX and we may see a bit more volatility given that the index it has a much smaller uh, diversification aspect than something like the S&P 500. Looking at the FTSE, now the FTSE is remarkably different, right? Because while we are getting this extended bull run, which we're seeing in most uh, of the indices, it's retracing after this ridiculous push to the downside. And we're actually seeing the 50 SMA move to the downside based off of that as well. So a lot more investors are asking themselves whether or not this is a validated bull move, but rather how far of a pullback is this? There's people that's not even... A interpreting this as a bull move and rather interpreting as a pullback. The 61.8 usually is a large area of rejection, uh, especially if we can get that in correlation with the 50 SMA. I definitely think there may be a good shorting opportunity in the FTSE. I'm not saying to go right the way back down to lows, but at least to get a bit of a bounce uh, off of the SMA and off of the, uh, which is actually priced around 7,720. So around that level, if we can get the SMA down there and we can push up into there early today, you can see we did gap down off that OPAC meeting, but in the futures market, we've actually recovered that gap already. Uh, and we're pushing a little bit higher. So let's see how this week unfolds for the FTSE 100. Not much economic data coming out, uh, which is going to affect this too much, uh, at least expected. So um, I think it's going to be a very good week technical, technicals. And um, 
given that these technicals are lining up right here, we may have a great little fading opportunity on the FTSE 100. The final indice I wanted to have a look at was the XJO or the Oz 200. Uh, I mean, wow. What a bullish week we had last week. You can see uh, just the element of how high we actually managed to produce and how well we're running today as well. 3.45% last week, jumping out of this range, which we were stuck in for a little while, the whole way through March, uh, really running the upside, just about to test the 50 SMA, much like the FTSE, uh, right maybe even today before the S&P 500 opens, which could be a very key area of rejection. Once again, much like the FTSE 100, is this more of an element of looking for a pullback or is this an element of a bearish, uh, a bullish run? That's for you guys to decide. It could play out like a very nice head and shoulders move um, as we do come to fruition. You can see a bit of a trend there. It could come off that trend there uh, and a push further down. Who's to know? Uh, let's keep an eye on how this RBA rate statement's going to go. If we do get a bit of a hike in the interest rates, I can expect the market not being too happy about that. Um, so keep an eye on that, how that does unfold later this week. Lastly, I want to have a quick look into crude oil because as you guys know, in commodities, I absolutely love to close a gap. I absolutely love to find a big gap in the market and find a way to trade that back down and you can see based on this OPEC meeting the natural <laughs> crude oil has absolutely gapped we've gone out from closing at 75.65 uh, all the way to opening up at 81.48 and uh, it's about a 7.5 percent gap up based on this OPEC production meeting uh, they have and it was a bit of a surprise it must be said uh, they have come out and cut their pledge on how many uh how much oil they're actually going to produce they've come out and they've said that their move is aimed at supporting market stability the us have come out and um i mean they've come out and pretty much expressed their discontent given that uh it's not great. A spokesman for the National Security Council did come out and said, we don't think cuts are advisable at this moment given market uncertainty. And we've made that very clear. And they have. The Biden administration is not happy with how that's gone. However, it's happened. We've gapped right the way up into this area of resistance, which you can see it has rejected multiple times. We did gap right the way up into that. Uh, and we're seeing a bit of rejection early on. Filling this gap's really, really attractive to me. Uh, I know we don't really like leaving these gaps in the market. There's going to be a lot of orders to really fill that. Um, it might take a little bit. I think we might sit and then come back down once the kind of market has realized the fact that this has been priced in. A pull down, a tap into this area, and then a push back up is also highly likely, given that this new production cut doesn't come into fruition until May. Okay, that gives us another month. We'll look at the daily chart here. If we could have a bit of a slow push back down, fill the gap, and then price it back in by the time May comes around, it definitely could uh, see something happening there. But let's just keep an eye on it. It's going to be very volatile in crude oil. There's going to be a lot of news coming out in the future about why they're doing this and, uh, and how it's actually going to take effect. So do keep Keep an eye on how this is going to unfold over the next week and the volatility which may come from this as well. A bit of a crazy week. Uh, that's a quick little analysis across the major assets in which I see given the best opportunity this week. If I've missed anything or you want to see another asset analyzed, feel free to come join us in our live streams or leave a comment below on your favorite bit of analysis on what's your opinion on where oil is going to go from here. Remember, if you haven't, Come over and subscribe, join our live streams and join Don Dawson and I as we drive through his career and get an understanding on what's really driven him to get to where he is and what he does day in, day out. And in fact, here's a little snippet of that interview for you. And basically, you were supposed to track this thing. And, and if it got to a 1.25 or something, you were supposed to buy the spread. So I tracked it for a few weeks or whatever, and I saw it getting down to this 125. So I called up my broker. I go, hey, I want to buy this TED spread. And he goes, like, don't you want to trade a regular futures contract first instead of a spread, <laughs> like, which is you're buying one leg and you're selling another leg. And I said, no. I said, I want to buy this spread. And he was like, where did you get this? And I said, oh, I was reading about it in a book. Well, he read me the riot act about books will never make you money. Oh, you're like that. I said, put the order on. You know, like just this cocky greenhorn. <laughs> just put the order on. I'm paying this guy $40 round term commission. This is that was way back then. So that's $80 because you got two positions on. 
Well, a couple weeks went by and it hadn't moved. It just sat there. And I was like, oh, maybe he was right because I'm just $80 in a hole because it hasn't moved. And so shortly after that, uh, Mexico announced, uh, announced that they were going to default on a loan. All of a sudden, there was this flight to quality. That people wanted to be long treasury bills and euro dollars are basically U.S. dollars deposited outside U.S. bank or U.S. shores, but there's no guarantee. So people were repatriating that cash back. So they were selling the euros, buying the TEDs or buying the T-bills. Well, I was long T-bills and short euros. So this spread is going like this. I had no idea how much I'm making. I just knew I was making a lot of money. It was like, whoa, 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 whoa. So I let it go for like two or three days. And I finally, I called up my broker. I was just, at, this is what we literally called, <laughs> like placing orders. And I go, I go, <clears throat> Dwight, you can sell that spread now. <laughs> he goes, he's, he's lucky SOB. <laughs> like, 